podcast for Tech Tuesday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We're going to start with our Tech Tuesday, Assist, Assistive Technology for Travel. Um, if you are joining us from Facebook, if um, you would like to um, talk to the presenters and to um, add to the conversation, um, please join us live on Zoom um, in order to also get the live captioning um, from the Zoom. We will not be monitoring the Facebook page and the comments in the Facebook. You will have to um, join us on live in the Zoom. Um, to register, the link will be in the comments to register and to join us on Zoom. For those of you that are on Zoom, thank you for joining us today. We'll get started in just a few more minutes. Just waiting for more people to get into the room. We started at 12.06. Is that okay, Laura and Abby? Sounds good to me. Yep, sounds good. Okay, perfect. For access, um, for those that will need to use the captioning, um, you can turn on your captions by clicking the CC um, button that is on your toolbar on Zoom. And we have our ASL interpreter, Haley. Um, they are spotlighted so that everyone can see the interpreter. If you need help with the, the view so that you can see the interpreter, please let us know in the chat. All right, everyone, it is 12.06. Again, thank you for joining us today. We hope that everyone had a great long Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we are gonna kick off today by talking about assistive technology for travel. Uh, my name is Asian A. Thomas. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am the Youth Assistive Technology Specialist at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. And I am presenting today with Laura, and Abby. Um, Laura, you want to introduce yourself next? Sure. My name is Laura Hall. I work on the assistive technology pro program as a um, specialist in um, environmental controls and Dragon Naturally Speaking and some daily living AT. I'm also the director of our Leaders for Inclusion program, which is a leadership program for um, young adults age 18 to 26. And I'm Abby Squires and I am our AT specialist for gaming and crafting. So the image on the screen is the image of myself and my two kids. We were actually on our way to the airport, um, heading to Florida, going to Disney World. Um, some of the places that I've been traveling, um, I've actually been to Ireland, Mexico, St. Thomas. Um, we go to California and Las Vegas pretty much every year. I have family over there. Um, so my family loves to travel. Um, we love being on planes and uh, doing all the things <laughs> when it comes to traveling, um, exploring, being a foodie, uh, going to different places. Um, some of the things that I don't like about traveling is definitely just the um, chaos of it all, like especially when you're traveling with children, uh, just a lot of packing, planning. Um, so some of that can just get overwhelming, um, but it is is super worth it. Um, once, Especially once you get it down and you have a lot of, hopefully the AT that we talk about today, 
um, to help you and assist you in planning and packing and, you know, getting there and think just to feel comfortable when you're at your destination. Um, traveling is just a really great experience. And um, this is Laura, this picture was taken um, in Port Huron where I was camping with Abby and some other people. Um, so this is just a picture of me in front of the lake. Um, my favorite place that I've been is probably Niagara Falls, the Canadian side. Um, and I've also been to Mexico when I was really younger um been to washington dc and a few other places in the states still looking to travel um, more outside of the united states i'd love to do like an accessible african safari i think that'd be like my dream vacation um i love seeing new places and learning about new places and i just wish that there was more accessibility for me to do so so what i like about traveling is seeing new things what I dislike about traveling is inaccessibility that doesn't allow me to see new things. So that's me. And this image of me, um, Abby, this, I was in Ireland at the Giants Causeway and that's probably my favorite place I've been is, is Ireland. Um, I've been to the Canadian side of Niagara Falls as well. And one of my favorite things is to take road trips and the one I, the biggest one I've done was with my sister and we went from Michigan to Seattle and we got to stop at a lot of cool places along the way. And that's what I love is just experiencing different, different cultures, different, um, different food, different, just like seeing what else is out there. And a big thing that I don't like about traveling is when places don't really give you a lot of information beforehand. Like I do like some spontaneity, but I also really love knowing what the parking situation is like and bathroom situation. Um, so my main thing is like a lot of anxiety around travel, but, but yeah. All right, so let's hear from you. Um, those that are um, joining us on Zoom, if you want to um, unmute and share or write in the chat, um, let us know like your favorite places to go will be your dream place to go, um, things that you love about traveling, uh, what you dislike about traveling, or just, you know, where you've been. Do you want to unmute and share? You can unmute and share, or you can type in the chat. You can always, if you don't feel like typing in the chat right now and you feel like sharing a little later on, you can always do that as well. in the chat. Um, Mansoor said, thank you for adding this adventurous topic. Let's have some more info on it. Yes, of course. I hope that um, people learn a lot from this. Right. And normally, so what we would be going over next is um, we talk about our program and what we offer. But recently we have done an event down in Dearborn and they've actually took a video of us at one of our events and kind of we talk about our program over that. So we might share a video instead of going over our normal slides. And Asian is going to pull that up in just a moment. Can you still see the box? I'm trying to move it. Um, I think maybe there's like a line at the bottom of the screen that we can see. It's like grayed out, but yeah, where your mouse is right now. Okay. But before so, it was at the um, top and kind of covering things, but it's better yeah. now. Yeah. I'm sorry. Usually it doesn't show. Um, so our <laughs> mission at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition is to cultivate disability pride and strengthen the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. 
So at Mi Michigan Disability Rights Coalition, uh, we focus on disability justice infrastructure, ending violence, racial equity, increasing tech access, which is a big part of our assistive technology program, um, independence and transitioning. And then also we have a few public health initiatives to end um, social isolation. So the video that we're gonna watch is gonna give an overview of the AT program. So we are here today as part of the Michigan Assistive Technology Program, and we are a statewide program aimed at helping folks with all different kinds of disabilities to get hooked up with assistive technology to do the things that they wanna do. So that can be anything from art to education, to recreation, we have an outdoor recreation person, uh, gaming and crafting, daily living. I find that a lot of people don't know that these things exist, right? So when you talk about assistive technology, a lot of people think about only computers, which is important, and we do do some of that, but like we have crayons and things for mental health and things for cooking and life skills and just things so that you can have a full life and do the things that you want to do. Oh, I like that. One of the things that's really fun for me about working with the kids is everything that you show them, they're really excited about. I don't know if you've kind of seen the energy in the room today, they're really excited about everything. And also just for me, as the youth uh, assistive technology specialist, I love anything to do with kids. So I get really excited anytime I see kids being really excited. But, and then just to let people know again, and to sort of normalize that it's okay for people to use these things and need these things and that they're available. Generally, what will happen with our program if folks need something is they'll call us and say, I need supports with A, B, C, whatever it might be. And then we will get them hooked up with the appropriate specialist based on what they're telling us they need help with. And we can talk through the options that we have and if they want to try something, we can provide demos. We can come to folks to do those demos or they can come to us, whatever works best. And then if they decide that they like something, uh, we can loan it to them, most times on a short-term basis. But then if they need something longer term, we can work out that arrangement. And then at the end of the loan period, if they decide that they want to buy the device but financing is an issue, we can direct them to places that might be able to help them with financing. Yeah. So we try to have a little bit of something for everybody, again, just so that they can do the things that they want to do with their life. Any questions about the video? All right, so Erin did a quick um, overview of our program. Um, the biggest takeaways about the Michigan Assist Technology Technology Program is that we cover the entire state, so we will travel to you. Um, you can reach out to us if there's anything in any type of area of your life, um, things that you want to do. Um, you can reach out to us and we will get you to the appropriate specialist um, to work with you on what devices will help you um, do whatever it is that you need to do. Um, and we are a free program um, for all ages, um, from infant to older adults. We will provide um, assistive technology devices. Um, I think one thing that Erin did not say in the video, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure, <laughs> but I just mentioned, just wanted to take the time to highlight our lending library. So right now, um, our lending library is available on our website, mymdrc.org slash lending hyphen library. Um, we have more than 1,700 pieces of AT, and we're always adding things to our inventory um, in our online library. Um, and those items can be loaned out short and long term um, for short, short and long term term loans. Um, Aaron did go over some resources and funding. Um, these slides will be available to everyone that registered um, after the session. Um, so just for everyone to be able to reference like what our program does, uh, we did still list and um, 
add these slides about our program to the presentation. So what is a team? Um, Abby, you wanna take this slide? Yeah, sure. So what we consider AT is any tool, software, or app that can help people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they like to do. Um, technology can make things easier for everyone, for people with disabilities. And um, so a couple different AT that we have on the slide here are communication boards, uh, medicine reminders, and different seating options for um, sensory. So again, just kind of going over some of the categories of the AT devices that we have that it can can that AT can assist people with. Um, in the video, Aaron kind of talked about how just anything from recreational activities to your education um, needs to if you need assistive technology at work or even for just daily living, things like cooking, eating. Um, so we have a lot of different AT devices and cover a lot of different categories. So please reach out and utilize the service. So now we're gonna get more into the topic. <laughs> so just um, after just overviewing like what you can um, utilize the different items that we talk about, and if there's something throughout this presentation that interests you and that you do wanna try out, um, just good to know about our program and that our, our services are free and that we can travel to you to show you a device. Um, but just to keep that in mind as we're going through the different devices um, that you can reach out to us to try these out for a demonstration. Um, so before traveling, Abby? Yeah, so before traveling, mm -hmm. something I like to do and would definitely recommend to others is join virtual groups. There's so many different groups on Facebook. There's a lot and like watching videos, a lot of different YouTube channels or TikTok chant like accounts. So there's one that I think it's called Curb Free with Corey Lee, and he is an accessibility travel blogger. He has spina bifida, and he's been to all seven continents and over 35 countries. And he just has a lot of different like videos that talk about different local attractions and talks about the accessibility of everything he goes to. And there's a lot of other channels out there and things that are not, it can be disability specific. It could be, there's a uh, glitter and laser. She does stuff for plus size travel tips and there's very specific and there's also very broad um, categories. But if you, if you're wondering about something, there's probably a group out there. And there's a lot of cool different access, um, access travel guides for people with disabilities. Um, and we'll have a bunch of, um, not all of them, but a good amount of uh, links on our resource guide for people to check out. And if you know of any others that you really like and want to send it our way, we can always add that to our list so more people can learn learn from it. Um, definitely the watching videos prior to going somewhere. Like nowadays we do have the access to be able to get on YouTube. Um, and so even from like amusement parks to just hotels, um, seeing like the layout of everything. And then, you know, so many people are um, video bloggers that are going through and their whole channel is just about traveling to different places. And even some people like, um, record like themselves going down a water slide or going on different amusement park rides, um, traveling like throughout the um, amusement park or going like checking into the hotel and what their hotel room looked like. Um, I think those are just much uh, better to like have those type of um, things to, that you can review before you travel somewhere, especially like my family is a neurodivergent family. And we're very anxious. So for us to be able to watch something before we go, like it really does ease a lot of the stress um, for me and my kids. So a lot of times there are travel guides um, to assist with planning. So um, Disney has a disability access um system that they create um so a lot of different places like they have a guide for people with disabilities to be able to access like just different planning tips before you go um frequently asked questions um they have a lot of different tips and um just different 
things in their guides that help with like transportation and getting around when you're there, talking about accessibility and the different accommodations. And then even like um, entrances and when you arrive, like if you need to go check in to let people know that you have a disability and need an accommodation, um, you will go to a different area of the park um, to get those accommodations. Um, and then they also have a lot of different um, things in the guides that will show you like if you're a lost person or if you get lost, like just to go over that with your family. Um, and then how to access the different attractions. So it'll give you like a different map that will show you which rides or which areas are more accessible. And then even those um, break spots, right in the points um, around the park or in the area or even like museums, um, they will have different areas where you can take a break um, for sensory processing or just if you needed an area to just be able to like rest your legs or whatever the case, but it's just, it's great to be able to have these guides to map out the different things that you may need on your trip and while you're traveling. So um, be just being on the lookout or asking for that when you're going to a specific place. And these guides are, like I said, muse, museums, amusement parks, zoos, um, all types of different areas. They have a specific guide for people with disabilities. Um, and the image on the screen is just a bunch of different um, Disney World guides for guests with disabilities booklets. Okay, so now we're going to move into a little bit of packing and planning. Um, so getting ready for your trip. And a lot of that comes down to what you're going to need when it comes to your luggage. So I want to start out just by pointing out the picture in the upper right hand corner. This is me several years ago when I was still traveling by airplane. Um, just I put this on the slide because I think it's important for people to know that airlines cannot charge for your mobility equipment. So things like your wheelchair, your walker, a cane, a shower chair, a Hoyer lift, um, those things can't be charged by the airline and travel for free. And if you have things that you're looking to um, not get broken because mobility equipment gets stored down with luggage, um, a lot of bloggers and travel, people who are travel guides recommend covering some of your important um, equipment in, in bubble wrap, which is what I did several years ago going to DC. So you can see that I've covered like my switches and my headrests and things that stick out and could just tend to get broken off. Um, those were all covered in bubble wrap. So that's something that is suggested. Um, the next thing on the slide going from right to left is um, luggage straps that are bungee cords. These allow you to bungee your luggage together and put like a duffel bag on top of a, of a suitcase. And so really thinking about what you need to get through the train station, the airport, the bus depot. Um, is it better to have your luggage together? Or in my case, I like to have a lot of bags that I can hang on my chair. Um, so I tend to tend to pack in duffel bags and in um, backpacks, but other people really like luggage and things that can expand and things that have accessibility built into your luggage. And that's some of the stuff that we're pointing out today. So next to that is, a, um, this is a, actually a luggage bag that goes on a wheelchair, clamps on a wheelchair called the Phoenix Instinct. And uh, I'm going to take a sip of water here. This is meant for chairs that have the low bar, um, manual chairs that have the low bar on the back. This clamps on and rolls around with you like your wheels. Um, the luggage will move with your wheelchair while you're while you're moving throughout the area. So you can buy a set of these bags and also um, put them on top of each other and then be able to carry more luggage. And another piece of luggage that kept coming up in travel blogs and things like that that we were looking at is this, um, this piece of luggage by Wrangler. Um, you can buy several pieces and they stack together. But one thing that's cool about this particular piece is that it's got um, a cup holder, a USB port, and a full phone holder. Um, for convenience. It's got those spinner wheels that make it easier to move through. They move in 360 degree um, 
movement patterns. Um, the inside of the luggage is expandable to include more room. And then it's lined with interior pockets so that you can put things in there too. So just a few ideas about packing and planning before you start traveling. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, the next slide. Just talking a little bit about ET for memory. So just like we need reminders while we're at home, we definitely need reminders when we're on vacation. Um, things like remembering to take your medication, what time your flight leaves. Um, a lot of these things can, can be connected through your cell phone, your iPad, a tablet or a watch. Um, I know you could check your flight um, based on the, on the uh, airline app that you're using. Um, you can set yourself reminders to take medication, to be at the airport, to pick up your luggage, just different things on your smart devices. You can also use voice assistants like Siri or Hey Google to uh, set alarms and reminders or check your flight time. And then smart speakers like Alexa or Google Home can also help with setting reminders and, um, and uh, checking out things that you need to do before you travel. You could put, just like you can make a grocery list, you can make a packing list for, for travel um, on Alexa. And you can have her notify you on your cell phone. So even when you're apart from your Alexa, you, uh, you still get those notifications on your phone. Next slide. So also um, before traveling, um, just kind of getting used to um, some of the communication apps. If you're not using them um, daily, um, something to kind of help and assist um, deaf and hard of hearing um, people to, there's some speech to text apps where um, when someone is talking, it will show up on your screen, the text so that you can read what they're saying. There's a lot of different hearing accessibility features on cell phones and tablets as well. Um, an app that we usually demonstrate for people is called Live Transcribe. Um, and then we also um, demonstrate a couple of different um, low vision apps. So for people that are blind or have low vision, um, there's a seeing AI app. Um, and then there's also a lot of different seeing and um, accessibility features on your cell phone or tablet as well. And we can um, also demonstrate like how to um, turn on those different accessibility features, um, help you out with figuring out how to navigate through those accessibility features. Um, and then there's translation apps. So if you're going to a, a country that, or a place where they're speaking another language, um, there's a lot of different apps um, for cell phone translation. Um, there's Google Lens Translate, where if you take a picture of like the text um, on a sign or on like a, um, a flyer or something, and it's in a different language, it will translate it um, in your language um, back to you. So there's language translation apps. And then Project Relate, um, it's an app for non-standard speech. So if someone does um, have a disability where their speech um, is kind of, is hard to understand, um, you can use the Project Relate app and that app um, assists with being able to translate um, and communicate as well. And then uh, we also have our AAC um, communication specialist and um, that can assist with using like the communication boards and um, different switches as well to communicate while traveling. And I just wanted to add on to that. So like from some of the like the travel guides that I've seen, there's one that's like um, traveling with an ostomy bag and they even have like downloadable things like communication cards or like that explain like this card holder has like contains body waste and an ostomy device and like kind of talks about why like you might need to like, go to the restroom right now and like in a discreet way so if there, that's something that you are looking into like that also can just give you an idea of like what to write on your own card if you want to make your own version So we talked a little bit about medication reminders when we talked about cell phones and smart speakers, um, but there also are several medication reminders that could be helpful for travel. Um, there's physical ones, 
So for example, the one in the lower left-hand corner is not one that I would recommend taking for travel as a set. But the nice thing about this um, 31 day med center reminder system is that it's got individual boxes for the days. And then it's got an alarm that you set up once and that can remind you up to four times a day to take your medication. So one thing that might be helpful is taking the alarm system um, without taking all the pill boxes so that you have that available to remind you when you regularly take your pills. Um, when we did research about pill organizers on the internet, there are a lot of different ones for travel. The difficult thing is to find one that can hold bigger pills and um, more pills at one time. And so the second one that we have on the screen, this rainbow colored one is just kind of a nice fit between being compact and having enough space to fit all of your pills. So it's flat, but it also is waterproof and you can take out the individual boxes. You don't need to take all seven um, or you can keep them together as a set. So that's why we chose to uh, show one like that on the screen. Um, if you're traveling and you just need access to things like ibuprofen or maybe um, something to help with motion sickness, you can buy these kits with prepackaged labels that allow you to put your own medication in and it indicates what it is. So it'll tell you, you know, here's a few things of ibuprofen, here's some motion sickness medicine, here's allergy medication, and they're all pre-labeled. So it'll kind of remind you what you need for travel as well. Um, on the lower right-hand corner is a picture of a timer cap. And this is just a simple low tech reminder of when you last opened the bottle. And when you would take your pills, there are, are a number of these on the internet that are fairly low tech and, and uh, low cost. And you can either set it up to tell you when to take your pills, or you can look at the last time the bottle was open, dosage and the medication. So that's an example of something that's low tech. Um, and then the upper, uh, upper right hand corner is a TSA approved uh, insulin refrigerator cool, how do I want to say this? Um, TSA approved insulin pen with a cooler um, that allows you to take your insulin on the plane. And um, it's nice to come back to with the travel case. So that um, is, I think we're good to go to the next slide, yeah. As for travel, um, there are a lot of different apps that can help with travel. Abby mentioned a couple. Um, Be My Eyes is one. For people who are blind or have low vision, um, Be My Eyes uses sighted volunteers to help um, to recognize um, items or pictures or read labels or recurrency, anything that you would need sighted assistance for. You take a picture of and it goes in real time and you can connect with somebody in real time that can tell you what that item is. Um, another app is called Seeing AI. This uses artificial intelligence and kind of in the same way you take a picture and it can show you um, short text, people, faces, currency, labels, barcodes. Um, so things that you would need to see on the go. From there, um, there's envision glasses. These are glasses that you wear that can describe a scene to you. They can read text and they can read text in large or small amounts. They can describe a scene, detect light, um, recognize cash, detect colors, find people, find objects, um, and help you explore. The transit app is a really cool app for traveling because it um, gives you accurate department departure times for buses and trains in your area. This is connected to over 300 cities, including the Lansing area. So it's really cool to be able to see our transportation system in the transit app. Um, when you look at the app, it'll tell you which buses are coming in your area and where you're trying to get to when you use the trip planner and it allows you to compare options like using the bus 
or taking a bike or taking an Uber or Lyft? Um, what would take you longest and what would cost the most? So that tr the transit app is nice to have if you're kind of in an urban city and nav trying to navigate yourself around. Um, I Access Life Accessibility is an app that people can, um, can take locations and rate and review them based on their accessibility for other people with disabilities to look at. Um, in theory, this is a really nice idea and there are, are, there are several of these. Um, the important thing is that people actually use the app and fill out the information so that other people can see it in our area. In Lansing here, we didn't see a lot in the area of accessibility, um, describing different locations here in Lansing. There wasn't a lot filled out, but in bigger cities there were, so this could be helpful if you're in a bigger city and need, um, need something to look at to kind of help you plan ahead, like Abby was saying. Um, yeah, and the more people that use it, the more information is going to be out there. So you can always like input your own data too to help other people. Good point, Abby. Um, there's also good maps, and this is used by some event planning companies or some bigger places like airports, and it can help direct you to where you need to go based on like you take, you know, walk 50 yards to your left and then go straight, it can tell you exactly how to get to the point of, that you're looking for in the app. So that's really neat. And then there's AbleView. Um, AbleView was another one that businesses can subscribe to, to um, include their accessibility. Um, so we had things around here like the zoo, like our Impression 5 Museum, where it would show different, it would give you a walkthrough tour, like a, a virtual tour of the attraction. You can see where the bathrooms are, mark out your routes. Uh, what else have we do on there? I just you. love it. Yeah, it has like the whole 3D, like it's kind of like the little yellow guy on Google Maps that you can put on for street view, but it shows you through the whole entire building and the different levels of the floors. And so you can yeah, you can see where the bathrooms are or like where the entrance is and kind of like kind of helps ease that anxiety of like not knowing where things are, which I really like. And it also has like just lists too of the different types of accessibility features, like how many accessible bathrooms, if there's any elevators and um, really like everything you can think of. And it's super nice and I love it. And I always recommend that one. And this would be a cool one to... Um encourage businesses to to sign up for. I think I was looking and it's like $30 a year, but then they're listed on here. And, and to me, it shows that they're invested in inclusion. And if they're invested in conclusion, in inclusion, that is somewhere that I want to go. And it shows that yeah. they want a business there. So yeah, I think it's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. And even like the zoo that you mentioned, like it, how there's like the different, like the primate house or like uh, an aquarium like it'll even show you like you can click on the individual buildings too so if it's not just like a one building like it has different 3d layouts of all the buildings too as well as the park itself some very cool apps to check out for traveling and then of course there are apps for things like disney disney travel um the different areas that you may be going might have an app um, so check out those two in the different areas that you go. They might have specific apps for attractions that show you around. Um, so yeah, cool things with apps. And then there's also a lot for um, health and safety. So uh, some of the items would be like home accessibility things that you have at home, but they're also easy to take with you when you're traveling, like the sink sink extender um that one i think folds up pretty nicely and is easy to bring with you as well as like motion lights or night lights or there's on the bottom left there's this little frog in an inner tube and that helps with gauging temperature of the bath or uh, bathtub um there's and for like locks so there's different types of locks that you can use um for either peace of mind or uh like the top right there's one that goes into the deadbolt of the door, or there's one that's uh, 
you can put, it's kind of like a door stop, but you put it on the inside of your door and a, like an alarm will go off if it's pressed down. But then there's other more accessible locks. So there's some that if like doing the combination can, is difficult, um, whether it be with like fine motor or if it's memory, there's some that are fingerprint. Um, and there's also some that work with your smartphone and smart devices. So um, the one on the bottom right here, that could be used with an app on your phone or it could be used with um, like an Apple watch or an Android watch. So you don't have to worry about memorizing a code or using that fine motor to um, put in a combination. And there's other things too, like you can bring uh, foldable stools or there's even like travel carbon monoxide detectors and there's a lot of stuff out there but also if you want to go to the next slide Asian A sorry there's some additional um safety things like GPS tracking so if um elopement is something you're worried about um with someone in the family there's this uh, service called Angel Sense and they it's very um I don't and in depth, I guess, like, so it'll show you where at someone is at, how fast they're going. So, you know, if they've gotten into a vehicle or not, um, you can set up perimeters. So like, if you're at a hotel, you can have it set up exactly for your hotel room. And if someone crosses that boundary, that's wearing one of the Angel Sense devices, an alarm will go off on your phone. Um, you can set up it's very customizable and there's different ways to wear things. You can have things that are attached to like a shoelace or there's like a necklace or a wristband or something like you can just like kind of pin onto your clothing. Um, things like the Apple AirTags. Uh, Asian, did you want to talk about the, the Apple AirTags a bit? Yeah, so the Apple AirTags, um, it's another like GPS tracking device, um, but they have like... Um, kind of like a key holder uh, where you can attach it to your keys or you can attach it to your luggage. Um, so it's just easier to be able to like track things if they get lost. Um, they also have like a wristband where you can put the Apple, um, it's like a circular device. Um, you can put it inside of the wristband. Um, there's an image on the screen of a little foot. Um, and so the, um, the child has the like an ankle band, but it's it's like a wristband, but it's on their ankle instead of it being on their wrist. Um, and they have a lot of different um, types, different ways that you can use the Apple AirTag. Um, Angel Sense, I believe there's like a monthly subscription for Angel Sense. So like an Apple AirTag would be something that um, you would just buy one time and it's attached. If you have an Apple device, it's attached to your phone. Um, so it's a little bit of a cheaper way um, to still have that GPS tracking. Um, and then something newer that is coming out is the Crowd Compass. Um, Abby, you want to talk more about the Crowd Compass? Yeah, it's. I was really excited when I stumbled across the Crowd Compass. So that one, you don't need to have a subscription. You don't need to have internet or Bluetooth capabilities. Like, you just need the device itself. And I wouldn't recommend it for some uh, for someone that might um, take it off and leave it somewhere. Like, if it's some, but. Basically, like if everyone in your group has it and you're at like a theme park or something, if you end up like getting separated, you just have to like hold up the device and it'll like each person's assigned a color and you can see where they're at the, like, to your left or in front of you and you can just follow them like a compass to find the other person in your party. So um, other assistive technology to assist with mobility. So there are a lot of different um, special tomato strollers or just um, different strollers um, that are available for children with disabilities. So this, the one on the screen is a jogger. Um, but really the different um, strollers, they have like a higher weight capacity than standard strollers. Um, and then 
um, they they just have like a different type of um, cushion and seating support in those type of strollers. Um, those are very, very expensive. Um, so there are other um, websites or different places and companies that are in bigger cities or even just like in your area that um, will allow you to rent those devices when you're traveling. Um, so one of the groups that is kind of like everywhere is the Creative Mobility Group. Um, and then there's the, there's Scoot Around. Um, they, they provide um, scooter rentals. So on the screen, there's a mobile scooter um, where you can sit down um, and use a scooter. Um, and so even like if you had a temporary injury and you, when you're traveling um, and, and so you didn't want to buy one for a permanent use, um, there's a lot of different rental companies and equipment rental companies um, to just look into in your area or whatever city that you're traveling to. Um, also, you can set those up in advance. So um, calling them like a few weeks before um, before, and they'll deliver it to you. So if you need it before you travel throughout the airport to help you with mobility, um, you can have them deliver it to your home before, or they can have it ready at the airport when you get there, or they can have it ready um, at the, uh, like Disney when you get to Disney, whatever you decide on when you actually want it to um, rent that out. And the prices are pretty um, decent to rent out the type of equipment that, that you would need for mobility. Asian A, one thing too, you can also rent accessible vehicles, um, which I think we don't think about very often. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can rent those and have them pick them up in the city that you're going to go to. Um, I've done this to travel before and then turn them in before you leave. And you have transportation for the duration of your visit, which is really nice. Usually they'll pick you up from the airport or wherever you're from to, to allow you to be able to, you know, travel without your own vehicle. And I, I should just say, like, even with the equipment rentals, it doesn't have to be um, a mobility. Um, I'm sorry, a, like a like electric or a um, stroller. It could be something as simple as your your walker or a cane if you just needed to um, a little bit more like stability or assistance when walking or to move around. Um, there's a lot of different uh, organizations that will rent out different equipment too. So another thing for um, traveling with children, um, there's supportive seating and we have these two um, supportive seating um, devices, equip the supportive seating equipment um, in our inventory. So one of them is a special tomato soft touch um, sitter. So it just gives a lot more um, stability and support. Um, so you can add these to car seats, you can add them to the stroller. That is the item in blue. Um, and then the go-to vinyl firefly seat, again, that's um, just another uh, supportive seating device um, that can be added to um, a stroller as well. And something to try out. Again, th these are expensive um, devices. Um, so these are things that we would assist with like helping you find funding to get those if you see that this will work out for you or even if someone needed to loan these out in the meantime, because insurance can cover these items, um, the, this is something that we provide as well for that kind of short-term loan while you're waiting for insurance to help out. All right, and some AT for car travel. So there are things that help, there are like the unbuckle me, which is something that helps with, um, unbuckling a car seat, because that can be pretty difficult, um, whether it be a fine motor thing or um, a, even like a strength thing. I feel like my thumbs are going to break off every time I try to unbuckle a, a car seat. Um, there are things like the swivel seat. So you can put that on your chair so it helps you um, get in and out of the car easier by turn, like when you have to turn your body to get in and out of the vehicle. Um, on the right here, there is something called the handy bar. So that you can put in, um, there's like the metal loop kind of on the side of your car door. Um, and you can put that in there and it helps give you that leverage to get up. You can push off of that. It also is something that can help break your window or 
take uh, cut your seatbelt soon in the event of an emergency. Um, as well as there's a strap that you can kind of hook onto the um, existing, what are they called? Like grab bar kind of things in your vehicle, or you can put it on the door itself, like where the window is. And that's just another um, way or like to get some like leverage to help pull yourself up out of the vehicle. And on the next slide, we have some AT for motion sickness. And on this one, we kind of just go over a little bit of the wearables that you can get. So there are things like the motion sickness glasses, which helps like create like a fake horizon to like help trick your brain into um, helping with your equilibrium and like with your inner ear, it helps. I personally haven't tried this out, but I don't really get uh, like motion sickness. Um, but I have heard that it's been super helpful. Like you might feel a little goofy wearing them, but it's a lot better than feeling like you're going to be you're being super nauseous. And there's other things like the relief band um, wrist watch. So that one, it's a little bit more advanced and high tech than the other ones like you see on the left here, which are like the acupressure bands that help by hitting an acupressure point on your wrist that help with motion sickness. And, and then there are other homeopathic kind of things. Um, like some people say some like essential oils, like peppermint help or chewing ginger gum, or there's also like the Dramamine um, medicine or the patches that people can wear as well. So even like talking about um, motion sickness and um, also we just really wanted to highlight like people that have um, sensory processing disorders or um, someone with autism, um, how just like sensory can be a really big thing. Um, so utilizing noise canceling headphones, um, we have a lot of different headphones for various um, sizes. So um, noise canceling he headphones for infants um, that have a band that wrap around their head and not the top of their head. So it goes um, around their forehead kind of, and it doesn't like, you know, how infants have a soft spot on the top of their head. Um, these infant head pan, these infant noise canceling headphones, they have a band that goes around. Um, and then even the softer um, headbands that are like in different um the unicorn or a dinosaur, just a, this um, fun type of um, headphones, again, for someone who doesn't like to have the really heavy headphones or on, on their ears or don't like to use the earbuds that go inside um, your um, eardrum. Um, they're just kind of like a flat, a flatter headband that will wrap around your head. Um, and they have, the, that's just a, a cute uh, kid version, but they do have those in just plain headbands. Um, for adults if you don't want a unicorn shaped headband. Um, and then there's these uh, head, these earplugs um, called loops where you will put those into your eardrum and they are also for noise cancellation as well. Um, and then just, just having like different sensory apps on your tablets or iPads or your cell phone, um, utilizing music, calming sounds and noises, um, meditation, so again, um, you know, finding the quiet area, or having this, knowing where to take those breaks for quiet time um, while you're traveling and utilizing those noise canceling headphones for sensory. Um, other sensory devices that we have um, and that we uh, recommend for people um, to even just, you know, some of them are just really cheap, simple. You can buy at Dollar Tree or Walmart or, you know, wherever um, grocery stores are just like little fidgets poppets um there's a uh, slime play-doh like using just though like if someone has a sensory where they need to touch or fidget with something to have that self-regulation um also like oral sensory so utilizing chew toys or having gum on hand um also a lot of times like processing um lights and just if you're going to like a place that's just super sunny and you're not used to that having sunglasses available um just also um there's some like foldable lights um I'm sorry foldable lamps um so even that like being able to control the light in your hotel room um some people have you know migraines when the light is too bright so just being mindful of that as well like just having those type of lamps and thinking about that as your AT 
Um, there's different tactile um, touchscreen devices that you can use um, for that sensory with touch. And then at the top of the screen is our very popular um, <laughs> cats. It's a um, robotic cat that is great for sensory as well. And, um, you know, it's not, it's robotic. So you can travel with it. Um, it will respond to touch, to sound. Um, it moves, it purrs, it rolls over. Um, am I forgetting anything? It meows. <laughs> so that's a popular um, sensory um, robotic pet. <laughs> And we also have dogs. <laughs> yes. Right. And then we also have some things for plane travel and kind of going off of what Asian name was just going over with like the headphones. If there is a specific type of headphone that works best for you and you really like and it's Bluetooth and you can't use that on the plane because normally you have to plug into the um, back of the seat. There is a transmitter that you can plug in that will make it Bluetooth accessible. So you can use your Bluetooth headphones. And there's also different types of things that can, um, you can attach to like the table tray in front of you that can hold your phone or tablet. Um, there are things that can help with like circulation or just um, sensory, but there's like foot hammocks. Um, you can make sure you get like your compression socks, um, other things um, for either like temperature regulation or um, if you want to save some space in your carry-on or personal item bag, there's different types of scarves that are end up being as big as like a throw blanket. So you can use that as a scarf, but also if you need it for a blanket on the plane or roll it up as a pillow, those are super helpful without um, having to sacrifice space in your bag for um for a blanket or pillow or anything like that. So there's also um, a lot of temperature regulation devices um, available. Um, some of the things like if you, um, we have some people that um, if they get too hot, like that can really, um, um, trigger some of their other symptoms with their disability. So um, we really wanted to talk more about temperature regulation and being able to cool down when you're traveling to hotter um, areas. So there's cooling vests. Um, the only thing with the cooling vest is that you have to kind of travel with a cooler to keep the vest um, because there's like freezer packets in, within the vest. Um, so you'll have to travel with like a cooler to make sure that those um, the freezer packets don't um, thaw out and melt. Um, but those are helpful to cool down quickly. Um, there's also cooling towels. So um, Frog Togs is a popular brand. Um, some of the Facebook groups that I'm in, like they, a lot of people have tried other cooling towels and they really recommend the Frog Togs brand. Um, so that's just a towel that you will wrap around and um, it just helps cool you down. Um, and then there's different portable fans. Um, the ones that we have on the screen is just a neck fan. So you'll just wrap it around your neck, hit the power button and it will just blow um, air. Um, and then the air circulates all around. So it's not just constantly blowing into your face. So you don't have to worry about like that feeling like you can't breathe because you're inhaling too much air. Um, so it kind of, the, the way the blades are, like it, it blows it all around you and not just up into your face. Um, the other portable fan that we had picture here is um, it comes on a necklace, um, but you can, um, the way that it's held, it doesn't just swing. It's like, it's more stable um, so that it's not swinging all over the place. Um, and then it flips out so that it's blowing up into your, um, like to your face um, from there. And it's, um, it's easier than holding it all day when it's wrapped around your neck. Um, so it's just kind of like a hands-free, um, portable fan. And then there's this device called the Ember Watch. Um, this device, it first of all, um, pays attention to what your temperature is. So an app on your phone will let you know, like if you're getting too hot, and then you can um, press for you, you to feel relief, and then it will send signals to you to, to your body to cool yourself down. That one does sound really cool and I want to try that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, 
and then the the temperature um temperature regulation to warm up so there's a lot of different devices like um again so if someone um if they get too cold um sometimes it can trigger other symptoms with their disability so very important to keep their temperature regulated um so if you're traveling to colder places or even like you know say that you um, know you're traveling somewhere where you're, you may get rained on so you need to make sure that your body stays um, at a regular temperature and you need to warm up faster um there's low-tech things like um pocket warmers hand warmers that where you, they kind of activate as you like put them in your pocket they're little they're like packets of warmers um, and then a lot of these devices are electric. Um, so there's electric gloves that will warm up and heat up, electric socks, um, different jackets that have warmers within them. Um, there's heat pads that you can just wrap around your waist as a buckle and they will, um, and you can like set the temperatures. There's seat cushions that you can add to the car. Um, there's heated blankets, um, so many different devices. And then there's also like a handheld warmer that's electric. Um, that you can put in your pocket as well. So there's a lot of different devices to have um, to help warm up your body too. So also just some regular like everyday things um, when you're traveling. So, you know, having adaptive and sensory clothing to help. Um, if you have issues with um, buttons and snaps um, at home, like kind of relieving some of that stress of getting dressed by making sure that you have clothing that have magnets and zips. Um, something like that um, is just when you're on the go, like having to tie shoes constantly. So um, the these magnetic um, shoe ties are great um, for, for traveling. And then also like pop cans, like when we're at home, sometimes we don't even drink pop a lot or, you know, so it's like, it's easier if you have, and it's just a little device that you can just snap onto a pop can and it helps you be able to open uh, different cans. Um, the color um, identifier, um, that's just something, you know, available to, you just click it, point it to um, your clothing to make sure that you're matching your, your clothes. Um, great for people that are blind or have low vision or um, are colorblind. Um, and then the liquid identifier. Liquid level indicator. Liquid level indicator. I love this <laughs> well, one. I, yeah, never, I, I never get it. I'm always <laughs> like, all right, I got it. And then I don't. Like, I know uh, some so, of the words, yeah. You put so that one on one, the side um, of your cup. <laughs> yeah, you put it on the side of your cup. And then as the um, liquid goes up, if it hits a certain level, then it will be um, to let you know that you're getting too high on the cup. So that is, again, just another small device um, that's great to have um, and to travel with. And then there's some additional um, dining tools. So on like the bottom right, if you don't want to bring the actual silverware with you, there's universal cuffs that you can bring that work on most silverware that can help you just have a better grip. There's also weighted silverware that you can bring with you as well as like some plate guards. So if it's easier for you to pick things up by scooping them to like a the back of the plate and then being able to lift up from a flat surface. Um, those you can put on any plate and there's some adjustable ones. There's some foam tubing that you could bring with you and that could be used for silverware, but it could also be used for things like your toothbrush or writing utensils. It's really um, universally used with whatever utensils you might need. Also, um, the bottom left here, there's an image of a knife called the vertigrip knife. And that is something that you can um, just grab and then you just have to rock back and forth. So it's a type of rocker knife that um, may be easier for some people to use. And above that is a really fun one, probably not for a restaurant, uh, I recommend when you're camping. Um, it is a marshmallow roasting stick that can extend so you don't have to get too close to the fire, but also it's a fun one that has like a little reel on the side that you can spin that kind of rotates the marshmallow so you get that perfect marshmallow. And then, which kind of leads us to when you got to go on the go. So there are a lot of things out there that help, but also planning ahead is helpful. So using one of those apps to let you know if there's a an accessible bathroom available or 
there is a website called interstateareas.com and it can show you maps of rest areas on your um on your travels so if you were doing a road trip you can kind of put in like i'm going to be on i-75 for a long time and you can it'll show you different points of like rest stops where you can go to the restroom and there's different things like travel bidets so if bidets are something that you utilize and don't really want to go on a trip without there are different types of squeeze bottle ones there's portable ones that can shrink down to a small something to put on your keychain there are electric ones that you can take with you that you can just either fill up the reservoir or put a water bottle attached to it and you just have to press a button so if the squeezing would be something difficult that is a good option and then there's one that's even more compact that you can take camping or wherever and you can just most bottles like pot bottle or water bottle you can screw it on the top there and use that and um then there are other items when it comes to hygiene that we're going to go over on not the next slide but the next uh, so if you want to go to the next slide uh asian and kind of go over some of the different types of clothing and watches yeah so um Abby mentioned the travel bidets, but there's also a lot of different um, types of portable potties as well. Um, so again, traveling with with um, children, um, there's different clothing um, as well. So like more absorbable um, pants. So if there was an accident, um, you wouldn't have to, you know, clean out the car seat and all that, um, which can be just a hassle in itself. Um, so wearing like absorb the absorbable underwear or clothing, um, if there just in case there is an accident. And then also, um, one thing for me, like just being an adult, like I can hold hold it longer. Um, so even just having those reminders to say, like if you are traveling um <clears throat> with kids or someone that needs to use the bathroom frequently, like just kind of setting aside those potty breaks or those bathroom breaks. Um, so reminder watches are great. Um, there are different like potty watches for toddlers. Um, they kind of make like a cute sound and flashlights. But there's other um, reminder watches too. Like if you have teenagers, preteens um, that need a reminder. And so they just kind of look a little bit different, have a different aesthetic where they kind of look like an Apple watch or just a regular watch. Um, but there, there's a lot of different reminder watches out there um, and they do different things. So they either will make a buzz or they'll just vibrate. Um, but just having those um, those reminders um, are very helpful when traveling just to prevent um, accidents. Um, and then when you're at your destination, um, having bed pads available, like there are reusable ones, there's throwaway bed pads, um, and then making sure that you kind of figure out like the bathroom accessibility. So if you do, if you are traveling with someone that has a hard time getting out of the bed, um, maybe having like a portable um, potty ne next to them or even you know just kind of making sure that they're at the bed that's closer to the bathroom because they have a hard time getting to the bathroom just different things like that to think about um, when you're at your destination or at the hotel of how yeah, they're and get something to the I feel like I should have added this too like travel commodes that's something yeah, I forgot commodes. I was going to put an image on there and when it comes to like the um, different types of underwear as well, they make those for adults too, not just children. Mm -hmm. um, and it's similar to like, if you've heard of like the period underwear, they have the same thing, but for leaks. But I don't know if, I wouldn't trust it fully if you think there might be like some major accidents. Um, so I would still try and think ahead for that. Um, but on the next side, we kind of talk more about different types of hygiene, like when it comes to showering or um, different types of grooming so there are different types of shower wipes so if there isn't an accessible shower or if you're camping um, they have some really large and durable um, body wipes and there are a lot of different kind out there so um, if you try one and you don't like it I would recommend trying some others there's one that um, I've had when we were camping it was called like hustle and clean and it was a really large sheet and it didn't make my fin my skin feel like sticky or gross after I used it. And like sometimes that can be a sensory thing for me or the smell of the wipes can be a sensory thing. Um, but there's also things called like the Freedom Wand or Bottom Buddy. And that can help with um, reaching when, while using the restroom or if you're uh, in the shower. So you can 
put toilet paper on the end and it can help you wipe or you can even put an extend like a razor so if you're shaving your legs or your armpits or you can put a loofah on there so you can help you reach when you're showering and there's also things for brushing your teeth on the go so if you're like camping or in the car and you don't have toothpaste or anything like that there are these um little travel brushes that you can bring with you that are helpful in a pinch and there's also some grab bars that you could bring that have like suction cups that you can um add to the bathtub or shower that or near the toilet um when you're out and about And there's a lot of stuff for camping as well. Um, we talked about the marshmallow roaster before, but there's also um, portable like sensory swings. Um, there's different types of portable camping chairs as well that are might be a little larger or might just be a different design that feels better on your body. Um, there's other types of telescoping um, roasting sticks for like hot dogs and other things like that. There's we have adjustable hiking poles. Um, a headlamp is super helpful as well to keep help keep your hands free while still providing light. And things like um, an electric bike or trike can be super helpful too. So, and that's not just for camping, but um, for other outdoor recreational activities to help you get to where you want to go or help you be able to stay out in nature for a longer period of time. Yes, and we have a whole entire outdoor recreation department. So if there's anything that you want to do to travel outdoors, be sure to reach out as well yes. to see what Jaleesa, you Jaleesa Irwin is our outdoor rec specialist, and she's super awesome. And there's a lot of cool stuff that we have for that. All right. So um, even sometimes when you're traveling, you know, you're not at home, it's really hard to fall asleep. So um, sleep sacks, they have sacks for babies and they have sacks for adults. Um, there was another image on the uh, slide that was like a, it's like a, um, a hoodie. Um, so I utilize that um, when I'm traveling because I need, instead of bringing my weighted blanket, I bring like this, it's kind of like a weighted hoodie, um, but it helps me stay warm. And then also um, just the weight of it, it helps me sleep better. Um, and then uh, different, you know, weighted blankets or just a weighted lap pad, um, just for the sake of traveling and like it not being too heavy um, to pack. And then, or um, if you don't want to bring like a lap pad or a blanket, there's also weighted stuffed animals. So those can also be helpful for um, people that need the weight to sleep. Um, we also have a sleep bar, um, which is like a, a speaker that can go under your pillow. So this is very easy and compact to be able to travel with. Um, it connects to your like Bluetooth to your phone. Um, so you can any type of apps where you say you need to listen to a podcast or music or anything um, or listen to uh, someone like an audible book um, to fall asleep. The sleep bar is a flat rectangle. Um, the idea of the sleep bar is that it goes under your pillow, but it won't disturb others. So once you lay your head down on the pillow, um, only you can hear it. So it's not supposed to be able, be loud enough to disturb other people. Um, there's also a sleep mask, um, which is like a sleep band, headphones, and same idea where it's supposed to only be loud enough for you to hear, um, won't disturb other people, but it's directly so that you don't have to um, navigate from your phone or look at your phone anymore. You can hit next, pause, turn up the volume off from the mask instead of having to grab your phone again. And also um, sound machine, smart speakers. So again, like traveling with the Echo Dot, which is a smaller speaker um, Alexa device. Um, those are just easier to travel with um, than to have to bring like your big one with the screen, um, but using like smart speakers or sound machines um, to help with falling asleep while traveling too. And there's um, also and like travel humidifiers and like travel um, oil, like diffusers as well that are super helpful. Um, as we were doing this presentation, we were like, oh, we could probably do AT for mental health when traveling. Um, we could probably do a whole hour and a half about that in itself. Um, but I just like to uh, 
talked about mental health apps that are out there. So um, mindfulness, so guided meditation, there's the Calm app, which is the app that's on the screen that does like daily reminders um, and check-ins about how you're feeling. Um, there's different apps that can help you with your breathing. So actually do a countdown of four seconds of breathing in and then four seconds of exhaling. Um, there's different apps that can help with focus and attention. Um, the PTSD Family Coach app. So if you are finding yourself um, having a hard time, like while you're traveling, like that's just something good to have um, available to you as a coping skill to utilize that app. Um, the PTSD Family Coach app, like you can kind of, you know, say like what you're feeling or something that's happening, and then it'll walk you through different steps to to help you regulate your emotions. Um, so just different mental health apps that can just assist you with different coping skills. Um, great to have in your mental health toolkit while you're on the go. Great. You want to wrap us up? Sure. So the takeaway is that we are here to help. Um, we showed you a lot of items today, and um, we can provide demonstration on how to use the items that we have in our inventory. So if you're interested in something, but you're not sure if it'll work or you're worried about funding, or if you don't have the capacity to learn a new, new device, that's when we can help because you can try it before you buy it. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be in our lending library because we add new inventory all the time. And just if it hasn't been mentioned already, but I think it is, um, we are a free federally funded program and we are here for you to learn and create space for more access to AT devices. All right, so again, um, we will be sending out these slides to everyone, and we will also be sending a resource guide with links to everything that we um, spoke about today and presented on uh, all the different AT devices. And if there was something um, on the in the pre within the presentation that you all wanted to try, um, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we provide training, we provide Tech Tuesdays to the public, but we also can come out and provide trainings and resources to organizations, businesses, uh, other companies, um, and then also to individuals. And again, uh, we provide de AT demonstrations and we cover the entire state. Um, so again, my name is Asian A. Thomas. My email is athomas at mymdrc.org. And I'm the Youth Assistive Technology Specialist um, so anything pertaining to youth um, could be directed to me. Um, and Abby is our gaming and arts and crafts specialist. Um, so Abby at mymdrc.org. And then Laura is our um, pretty much community living um, or if you have uh, environmental um, type of adaptations, any assistance with that, Laura can help with that. And Laura's email is Laura at mymdrc.org, but our general contact, um, if you just want to reach out and you're not sure, you know, exactly what it is that you need, or if you need a different department, um, you can email at at mymdrc.org. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Did we have anything in the chat before? Nothing in the chat. Any questions that you would like to ask us? Summer says, thank you all so much. No, Summer, thank, thank you, you for, for joining, joining us. us. Summer. <laughs> and yes, please, anyone reach out if you have any other questions or want to know more about a certain subject or are interested in more in-depth um, AT for travel for a specific uh, subject, let, let us know. If there's no questions or anything, um, we'll let you all go. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you so much to Haley, our cart, I'm sorry, our ASL interpreter, and Jody, our cart captioner. Thank you so much to you both for joining us Thank today. You, Jody.